I'd like to call this meeting to order. I was thinking maybe that our students could lead us in the flag salute. If you could stand up and lead us. Good idea. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Sunshine Law Statement, all requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been met for this meeting of the Board of Education of the Borough of Ordell. Notice of this meeting was filed with a record in town news and all persons requesting such notice. Mr. Darian, would you read the mission statement? The Ordell Public School District is dedicated to the ongoing pursuit of educational excellence through comprehensive, innovative curriculum and instruction. The district is committed to providing opportunities for social, emotional, and academic discovery to foster curiosity, courage, and character. Our goal is to prepare our students to become lifelong learners who are self-directed, resilient, productive, responsible citizens. Thank you. Roll call. Here. 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 Mrs. Noran. Here. Mrs. Shapiro. Mrs. Walker. Here. Mr. Walsh. Here. Mr. Darian. Here. Mrs. Nichols. Here. At this time, we will open to the public for agenda items only. some lights put on. Much better, thank you. Okay, so we love this night. Uh, we actually have an addition to this night, a new program that we competed in, I believe. Um, Thomas Edison Pitch Contest, right? So I was thinking maybe you could tell us a little bit about that first, have your team present us whatever they want. We'll do the certificates after. We'll take some pictures. We'll start with pitch per, uh, the pitch team. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Happy Hi. June. I'm glad to be here. Um, before I start with Edison Pitch, just overall thank you for your support always and your encouragement. And it's always nice to feel happy about being here to see you and to share the good news. Um, this year, Edison Pitch actually started last year with two teams that placed sixth overall. Edison Pitch is a contest that's been around um, for about 10 or 12 years now. Um, like everything else, I stumbled upon it looking for something new. And um, I loved it because it sort of is like Odyssey of the Mind in creative problem solving, the design process, um, you know, starting with something and changing it as you go, learning from your mistakes and creating something that's simple yet works. In essence, its name kind of tells what it is. It's an invention competition. What I was unaware of till this year is that there are, I believe, some 350 teams from across the nation that start. In my mind, it was New Jersey just because Thomas Edison and New Jersey goes together. So I was surprised to hear that this year at the final program. So we entered two teams this year, one team finished, and we were notified mid to late April that our fourth grade team of four students who, one, two, three, four, four are here and accounted for, um, made the top three, but we didn't know what place they were in. So we were invited down to the Edison <coughs> Museum in West Orange. Mrs. Hawley and I went and we met the students there, and each team that was in the top three for the elementary division, middle school division, and the high school division, so there were nine teams out of the original 350, who went to pitch their final pitch for their invention. 
as if this was actually going to be made. They were supplied back in January with a $200 maker kit um, that Pitsco puts together for them um, with sensors and motors and Arduino boards and things that I don't even know everything about yet. I'm still learning. It's new learning curve as they are. And um, using those objects as starters, they were encouraged to create an invention that would make the world a brighter place in the spirit of Thomas Edison as a humanitarian. So they learned about Edison along with the design process and created their invention for the final pitch. And they did an excellent, excellent, amazing job. Um, I'd send them off to businesses and let them go to work there. They're, they're very professional. Um, their presentation boards, their videos. Um, I will forward the videos to you so that you can see them. They're about five minutes long, and um, we were very happy to come in first place. So that was awesome. Wow. So yay for them. <laughs> they worked really, really hard, and I think that they'll tell you that it wasn't as easy as they thought from the beginning because while they are friends, sometimes friends working together is not as easy as it seems. So I'm going to leave it there for them to come on up. Um, so Matthew Feimer, Ruhan Tampabaker, Vihan Veja, and Akhar Shram are on their way up to talk with you. Come on down. Don't be shy. <laughs> oh, Vihan's up first. Go ahead. Hi. <laughs> Go ahead. So if you could just say your name for us so we can write it for the minutes. Uh, my name is Vihan. Thank you. So our invention was this thing that when things get near a sensor, it buzzes, letting the, per the visually impaired person know that there's something in front of them and they have to watch out. Very so interesting. How did you come up? Where, where did you start with that? You didn't start with that idea. No, we started with. Good. I sort of did this part. Good. So, so we started with something called. Oh, 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 something God. called Ruhan. Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Ruhan. So, when we took on the challenge, we started with an idea called the drone mail carrier. It would deliver mail without the mailman having to get out of his car, which would make it a lot simpler for them, especially on bad weather days and stuff. And, and then we came up with other ideas, like uh, the animal light. It could help animals cross the street say more safely because it would sense when they're on one side of the street and put a red signal up so the car could stop and they could cross safely. But then we found out that like they might not cross when you want them to sometimes. Disobedient deer. <laughs> <laughs> so did that lead you to where you ended up? Yeah, it sort of did because, oh wait, yeah, there was actually another idea, yeah. It was uh, called the voice-activated elevator. It could help stop germs from spreading because it was touch-free, basically. And then when we found out that was too complex, we, it led us to our last idea, Sense It. Okay. Let's talk about Sense It. Uh, okay. <laughs> so um, Sense It was this thing. Oh, uh, hi. <laughs> hi, my name is Matthew. So <laughs> Sense It was this thing where it was this machine and it had a sensor just sticking out of the box where all the components were. And um, when you got close to something, the sensor would sense it and it would make a beeping noise. Um, uh, yeah, beeping noise. So if a blind person, they can't see what's in front of them. So it would sense what's in front of them, make a beeping noise to alert them if something's in front of them so they can move out of the way. And how is that different than their, their normal cane that they would use? Um, so a cane, like, if you're just, like, putting it down, y you can still just walk into someone, because, like, your cane, you're not going like this with a cane. So, um, and just the voice, and the sense it goes on a hat, and, like, the, um, what is it called? Like, the distance of how far it could sense is far, so before they get close enough to, like, touch it with a cane, they could move out of the way. We also, um... On Facebook, there was that story about the couple in Disney World, a blind couple in Disney World, and how they wanted to let people know that it was okay to help them should they see that they were running into obstacles. 
and their sensor would alert other people who would be able to hear it. It's audible to everyone around them so that someone would know that they might have a problem or say, that's not a tree, it's a six foot wall that you have to walk around, follow my voice so that that was better. You also spoke with an expert and you did some pricing and marketing. Who did that piece? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so the cost to make it was $32.50. And we have like two products. One is just sense it like the normal one. It can be put on a hat, a cane, or a clip to a t-shirt. And it costs um, $34.99. And the other one is basically the same thing, but for like a garden detector. And that costs like $44.99 to get a higher profit. And why was that better than the cane? You told the pitch, your final pitch, why your sensor was better than the one that comes on the cane originally. And when you talked to the, the, the expert when you were developing your product. Uh, because um, the other product had headphones. So if the visually impaired person was also hard in hearing, it would be hard for them to do it because it wouldn't work. Do you have anything to add to that, Akash? Um, should I go? Yeah, go ahead, go. So since, oh sorry, hi, my name is Akash. So since it just is probably actually simple on the base, it just has um, an ultrasonic distance sensor, an Arduino Uno chip, and a piezo buzzer. So we, so if the ultrasonic distance sensor was within a certain distance where you can change the code in that to as you, at your leisure, so then if it was, um, and if it had gotten within a certain distance, we programmed the piezo buzzer to buzz so then the user would know that there was something there and they could be guided around it. Great, Great. good job. Excellent. So they had to they had to speak with an expert. They had to create a prototype that they brought down to show them that it would work, um, and that was and they priced out. The cost of the cane was twenty three hundred dollars or something like that. I'm trying to remember what you said yeah. at your pitch. Twenty three hundred dollars, but theirs was thirty eight, and they would market it to people who medically needed it for less money, um, not for a profit, so that they would benefit, and for other people who might want it because they're distracted on their cell phone or you know, are too lazy to look where they're going, that they would charge them more because that's where the money would come from to help the people who medically needed it. Very nice. Super proud. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we have some certificates for you and we want to take a picture with you. So I'm going to read the first one. They all say the same. So it is a certificate of, appreci of achievement and it says, in recognition of your contribution to the 2021-2022 Ordo Public School Thomas Edison Pitch Contest team, congratulations from the Ordo Board of Education. So the first person is a Kirsch. So come on up. Okay, next we have Vihan. Ruhan. <laughs> and Matthew. Okay, we're going to take a picture over there with your teacher, maybe. I just forgot one thing. Matthew was quite the trooper. He ended up sick and couldn't go down for the final pitch, so he participated on a Zoom call with us um, to make that happen. So, yeah, and also you'll see in the board minutes tonight that part of what they won is a $799 3D scanner for the school that will help us to re-engineer um, and reverse engineer some objects along with the 3D printers yeah. so that um, they can resize things. We could take Mr. Darian, we could take his head, we can make it smaller, we could put it on, <laughs> right? We could put him on the podium with a, my, you know, my or wife, something. My wife would like that. <laughs> so, yes, I'm coming, sorry. All right, let's take some pictures. Yeah, you could just keep on going. That's my favorite use case. Wait, more cameras coming.
scared the hell out of them. Well, that's what they said. They're using them in gardens, so like they get the rabbits out of there or whatever. Sense it. Big, big market in gardens, I'm sure. Thirty-five bucks. No. Can they go back next year? Absolutely, all the way through high school. Woohoo! So our hope is to get more teams, younger grades. The youngest grade is fourth grade for this contest, um, and then it goes all the way through high school. So. So there was 350 fourth grade teams. 350 overall, elementary, middle, and high school. And how did they pick the people to actually go present? That was the first pitch you put in a video pitch. Oh, and then you went down for your final pitch. Oh, to have nice. Different and you went uh, in front of a panel of judges to, to do your final pitch. Very nice. Wow. That All is right. so very cool. Yes. Just so very cool. So now we have more good news for Odyssey, oh. right? Okay, here we go. I'll go from this side. <laughs> it's Tracy Sham again. Hello. Um, <laughs> switching Hi. Odyssey hats. Um, Odyssey of the Mind, you know, is my love. Um, I love how Edison segues into it. And... Um, I'm, I'm just so pleased again to say that our team, you've been following since regionals. Mr. Walsh, a million thank yous as always for regionals and state finals and judging and support, and we love having you there, so thank you for that. Um, this year, I'll let the kids tell you a little bit about what they had to do. They chose the acting problem, but chose to add some engineering elements and some other elements because that's just what we do and uh, it makes it a little more exciting. So we're proud to say that at World Finals this year, we were one of 57 teams in our problem, our division, and we placed ninth in the world. So yay, top 10. A um, lot of heart and some troubles in the beginning, but they really kind of brought it together. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to just let them talk so you don't have to hear me anymore. Got it. Oh, just do it. Go ahead, Sambi. You're the older person. Ladies first. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Sambi. Uh, You're a repeat offender. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I did Odyssey last year, and it was virtual. And I have to say, this year was much better because we got to experience world finals, and we got to stay in college dorms and do pin trading. Uh, <laughs> and... It was really fun being on stage and like getting to meet people from all over the world. We got to meet like people from Switzerland and Poland and South South Korea. South Korea. Um, and so our solution, our first ideas were we had a couple. First, oh, yeah. so our problem was problem five: life is a circus. So we wanted to come up with something that you can like tell it's a circus but it's not really a circus and it's really unique so our first ideas were like an ocean no wait, space uh so we thought we could make a s space themed circus but then we moved on and thought maybe an ocean but instead we did a fishbowl so our set was a fishbowl and when you flip it around it becomes like the regular world uh yeah other people can add on if you want she's like i'm out <laughs> <laughs> go ahead bb bb thought she was joining a math competition right bb yeah <laughs> she went home the first day and she said to her mother this is not a math competition <laughs> go ahead so um we had three circus acts, and there was a young person character, a ringmaster, a clown, and a circus. P Wait, no. Yeah, you're right. So um, the young person character was really upset that 
acting wasn't working out for him. And he went to bed. Then the next day, he ended up in a fishbowl, his pet Goldie's fishbowl. And he met a... Um, he met a clown, ringmaster me, and the ringmaster was a mermaid, and the clown was a, yeah, was the school of fish. So we used CDs as our creative use of material. So we peeled off the foil off of CDs, and we made many things with it. So those are pieces of CDs? Wow. And you broke them up? How'd you break them up? With scissors? Oh, do you want me to get the clubs? Oh, yeah, you got it. These are the fish ones. Should I show them? Should I show them the school fish? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And how did you figure out those? Where did that come from? So you peel that off of a CD? Yeah, anyone want to add to that? Yeah, you can add to it as your microphone if you want. You know the Archimedes screw? Go ahead. So we came up with the idea to like peel off the CDs. When we were trying to build an Archimedes screw with CDs, it did not work. Um, so instead, when it broke, the CD cracked and we saw that we could peel off the foil. So then we got a bunch of CDs from like Ordell and River. Wow. River Edge, uh, and we peeled them with tape, and then we cut them That's and ingenious. colored them, and then we stuck them on the costume. Right. And this comes. This is part of her costume too. So where did That's that amazing. come from? Uh, this is the one we use. Um, she has lovely hair. <laughs> Who was the mermaid? She was. Uh, Bibi. Bibi was what she was saying. She was saying. And we showed the ultimate to you. Is that new kids on the block? <laughs> 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 I think there's a Jaws in there and a couple of other things. Yeah. <laughs> we found out people were very happy to get rid of their CDs. I had, kept coming home to them on my porch, <laughs> bags and bags. So They probably peeled over 800 CDs for the, the bottom of the costume alone. Wow. Anybody else? Okay, okay, you can talk with the Muppet if you want. Is it the Muppet instead of you, if that helps? Okay. Hi. Ah, wait. There. Go ahead. Speaker, Lucas? Yes, sort of. No, 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 at home. Hi, and I, I'm Chad, and I'm the main character. So, you know, acting school had just hadn't been really my thing. So, I decided to, um, just go to sleep having a horrible day and waking up in this fishbowl thinking it was Goldie's fishbowl, which was my pet goldfish. So on, on this trip, I guess, um, I learned that you don't just have to, um, I think, sorry. Yeah, okay. What were the three lessons you learned in the circus, the three acts? Um, we learned, well, I learned, um, a, mag a magical trick, cart, uh, I guess. Yeah. Like, mm. It's okay, it's just <laughs> fresh, <or> you're good. <laughs> <laughs> like a magical cup trick. And then I also learned um, how to tumble out of a fishing net uh, before a fisher could catch me, which sadly I'm not a fish. And I also learned um, how to um, hi hide food and re from so it won't be stolen by any 
Creatures or clowns? <laughs> yes, I had to get it out of the gravel. Good job. And um, Lucas's puppet won a Renatra Fusca Award for creativity at state finals um, as exceptionally creative. It's even got the swoop of Lucas's hair. They won uh, the award at the final? At state finals for Renatra Fusca, yes. And they won the award during the, the, the regional? Uh, they, no, it was, it was for state finals. Wow. And then, yeah, so it automatically advanced them to world finals. Not everybody wins that. No. Definitely not. <laughs> Hi, I'm Arhan, and I was the one backstage when we were performing. And as the backstage person, I had three main jobs. So my first job was to make sure this guy, who I named Cheeto, gets out and is our mysterious figure. The problem requires you to have a mysterious figure that pops in in the middle of the circus acts, and then pops back in at the very end of the story, in our case, the brownstone scene. So he's a little marionette boa. We used like a really, we, so we bought a marionette orange boa, and then we used it to make a marionette puppet. And I'm just going to go around and. Yes, he sheds, too. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> he leaves parts of yes. himself everywhere. Mysterious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what else was your job backstage? Because you had two important jobs that were creative thoughts. My other two jobs were the two cards that we had for our two original animals. So the first one was a mousetrap card that was a butterfly flying fish. So its job was to basically use the dowel that you have on a mousetrap card. We made it a fish fin. And so it goes, when it's going, one of the tricks was supposed to be to flip something over. So it's fin that had a CD fish on it, would go here, and it would come back around, and it would stay over here, making it rest on its other side, which is completing the trick. And the other car, the bane of my existence, is the bird serpent car. <laughs> so it is supposed to, emphasis on supposed to, hit a castle, it's supposed to make a ball that's in a ball box come into its mouth, go down the chute, and then go out a slinky tail. So it <laughs> didn't work. Um, Good thing it wasn't a required element. It, yes. <laughs> so I so the thing that happened with the car always is that I mean I got it to work ten times in a row, and then when I when we go up to start practicing for world states or regionals, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. And then we have to replace the ramp that it's on. We have to replace the tape or the wheels or anything. And then it still doesn't work. But you learned a lot. But it did, yeah, it really helped me learn a lot because it taught me more about engineering. And every time that I tried to fix it, it did work at least once or twice. We'll give you this for that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in the play, yeah. in the play, I was the clown, and the clown was a school of fish. So the mermaid ringmaster, who is BB, was basically teaching me like how to survive in a fishbowl uh, from the scary tiger bark. Don't forget your hat. That's yeah. his name. Tigger the Barb. His name is Tigger the Barb. <laughs> Good. And. Lucas, paper mache, tin foil, basically. Tin, yeah. <laughs> and then we painted him, and we attached him to the stick so that from backstage, Arhan could like move him, like that. When he filled with candy. Yeah. Wait, what? No. <laughs> and so this is my costume, and as the school of fish. Wow. bubble. Good job. You did it very nice. nice. You did a good job. Thank you. <laughs> you hand uh, drew every scale on there? Wow. Thank you.
<laughs> and you had this on film? Yes, I'll, I'll send you the final video. Yep. Yep, Ms. Shaw, yep. may I ask a question that yes. I always wanted to know? So you talked about your long term, okay? However, I happen to know that you as a team did something that very few or in a public school Odyssey of the Mind teams did. You conquered the OPS Odyssey struggle. What, what place did you what? come in in spontaneous, spontaneous at states? At state finals, what'd you do? We got very first. You got first place at in spontaneous. And what's really impressive about that is when this team competes, they compete in the middle school division. Yes. So when you think about the, the ability and the thinking and the analytical skills of an eighth grader, they are competing against eighth graders. And for years and years and years, spontaneous did us in. Yes. So can you, are they allowed to tell me what the state spontaneous was yet? Remember the, spa the state spontaneous problem? Yes, so actually the state spontaneous perfectly, like perfectly aligned with every spontaneous practice that we did. So what's the process for spontaneous for verbal? Puns, puns, puns. Okay. There is nothing but puns. <laughs> so each of us memorized a list of seven puns, as we had five team members at the time. So how, when you walk in, what are you given? How, what are the instructions? So you, so they always get, they always send you in, and there's like a dark, damp room with almost nothing in it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's Except the bare light bulb, no. <laughs> and then one window that's not opened, and it's like the the blinds, and it's it's, it's like that creepy haunted house scene. Um, <laughs> so you go in there and they're like, welcome to your doom and night nightmare. And then. So what do you, what's the process? If they walked in, what would they be told? This is a spontaneous problem. You have blah minutes to respond and blah minutes to think. Your problem is to do blah, blah, blah. So your state problem was? To name animals and feelings and to put them in a sentence. And we specifically did animal puns, which perfectly fit in. Yeah, we had yeah we had a list, and uh, one of the animals I remember was a horse, and we did the it was the main show. They had a list of animals that we had to use. Yeah, a Ms. list Shum, of animals. what was the problem? To so, name animals and what? So they had you had that was three three different animals with three captions. No, that was no that was like. Go ahead. I remember. Go ahead. So basically, there was a list of six animals and a list of six emotions or feelings. And we had to connect one animal and one feeling into a pun. So like... Do you remember one that you did? One of the examples they gave was like... Uh, there was a bee, and then there was the happy emotion. Believe in yourself and you'll be happy. Right. So we, ha we had one... Um, so you would be given typically two minutes to think, three minutes to respond? I think, I think one minute. One minute. No, one, no, no, two minutes. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Walsh is judge spontaneous. Yeah. It no was extra points for us. <laughs> well, I didn't get the date. They, they didn't give me the order they'll teach. So a minute to think, two minutes to respond? Yeah, it's a minute to think. Okay, and so then they tell you the problem. You have a minute to think silently and then each person has between five and seven, there's 35 responses for the team. So each of those 35 is judged as either common for one point or creative for three. So imagine this, name different voices and where they are heard. So just take a minute to think of two things that you think would be creative answers to that question. Puns are always creative, by the way. Which are worth five points each. Five or three, depending five on what point. Go ahead. Okay. Down here. <laughs> I was taking a stroll through the woods while I heard trees discussing their twigonometry test. <laughs> 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 So go ahead, think of, can you think of a, some, a sound? What is a sound you would hear? Uh, name different voices and where they are heard. Uh, anybody? <laughs> I got lost in the woods and the trees kept saying, leave. There you go, good. Yay! 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 Score one. Mm -hmm. Now, would that have been common? That would have been creative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> because it was a pun. It was a pun, but you have to say, the trees were kind and they have to leave me alone or something like that. So yeah, that'd be creative. A squeaky pig's voice on Insta Ham. He's so excited. So these are things to think of in a minute. 
Um, we also brainstormed a list in our classroom. Sometimes if it's not an animal pun, it's a silly situation. So we listed some 30 silly situations that fairy tale characters or storybook characters might find themselves in. So one was Captain Hook going to the second hand store. Right? So Captain Hook opened his second hand store. Right. And also, uh, Peter, yeah. Peter Pan was grounded even though he never, never lands. See, so like things like that. So, and it's really teaching them how to think on their feet. Um, it's, it's difficult to always think like that. So it's, it's really is a skill set practice. So I'm super, super proud of them for that. It's always been our hurdle. So yay, Mark. guys. Uh, if I'm gonna add something, so may I personally, uh, may I add something, sorry. If, so I tried to use all these puns in like a day-to-day -day life. Like you would just randomly hear me in leading up to state finals say, I bet a million dollars that that fish is gonna be better than that one. And then, cause better is a fish. And then there's no way that that one's going to win because that's not as good. Yeah, so there you go. That's but I it think, for me. Very nice. I think practicing the spontaneous, if you can come up with it different ways. I mean, they probably have a book this thick. Oh, I have, I have so many problems, uh, right? We, did, uh, we used to do 10 or 12 a day. I had uh, both. I had the, uh, the spontaneous, but mine was uh, verbal and nonverbal oh. together. Uh, oh, 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 verbal hands-on? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, you're, so you're given an object, right? Yeah, and uh, that's not the first time that I've seen it, but uh, that was, the kids had a tough time with it. It's tricky, yeah, because in a verbal hands-on, you might be given like a pipe cleaner and you have a minute to think, two minutes to respond, and you have to turn that pipe cleaner into something. A and cup, show a cup how it's used. two Q-tips, Right, so a straw. if it's a pipe cleaner, you can make a Roomba, so you, you'd make it in the shape of a circle saying it's a Roomba for Cinderella, you know, or whatever the case, uh, yeah. So. so you are all in sixth grade? Yeah. Are you coming back next year? Of course yeah. you're coming yeah. back. I'm coming back to hell. <laughs> Sophie no. was in, is in sixth grade this year, so she's graduating. So she made. We have I to go get up. it in one more time, right? Everybody else to, was a fifth grader. We so. have to go up to Riverdale. Yes. Oh no, I, I already have a conversation. Uh, he's from J.P. Stevens. The oh yeah. Principal. Um, Urbano. 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 Um, and well, I'm going to talk with him about continuing through. Um, but Sanvi made us Division 2. Division 1 is grades 3, 4, and 5. Division 2 is 6, 7, 8. So it's all Sanvi's fault <laughs> that she made us Division 2. But um, we definitely rose to the occasion, so I am yeah, proud. Yeah, going against 8th graders, that's amazing. So we're uh, going to give... Oh, go ahead, do you want to say one more thing? One more. Yeah. So uh, about wor it's about World Finals and, like, the experience. Um, I had really a lot of fun at World Finals. We got to like be college students for a couple of days. We stayed in their dorms. We ate in the cafeteria. Unlimited ice cream. Yeah. That's the favorite part. <laughs> Always the favorite part. Unlimited and ice cream. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to get you on the mm -hmm. world final judging panel. Did the judges go there for yeah. the judges get yeah. to eat there too? The spontaneous judges wear kilts. You probably can't. <laughs> you won't. Probably won't find me. Oh, John. Uh, oh, John. A kilt. You could wear a kilt. Kilt. I. I would pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That reminds me. At the end of our spontaneous problem, uh, we had this challenge that one of the judges or helpers oh. gave us. <laughs> and, um, so it said. It had an envelope and it said you have to follow these instructions and stuff. And it had this like long piece of cloth in it. it and we had to tail. we had to tape it to Miss Shaw. And then every time somebody asked what it was, where'd she you would, get your tail? Where'd you get your tail? I got I was supposed to stand. <laughs> You're gonna make me do this on camera. Let's spin around <laughs> and say I got my tail. It's spontaneous. <laughs> the next three you have to leave it on until after the award ceremony oh my god and every time someone yeah so now you know why i talk so much so i'm gonna talk for like a minute no. about or not <laughs> these people have things to do okay you can we ask love them hearing from them 
Would it be okay if I talked about something for a minute or so? Sure, and then we're gonna give out the certificates. Okay, that makes sense. Pin training. <laughs> Who's in charge here? <laughs> they are. Seems like the circus is here. Yeah. yeah. Come is on, this is the best creative? board meeting you've been guys. Introducing pin trading, a fun alternative to Pokemon card trading, where you basically get buy pins from your state and then trade them from people's from other states or countries. So, and you have to like it promotes on quick thinking and business decisions because not all pins are worth the same. Cause so if you were to get a Medusa from Virginia, it'd be a lot more than one of the fairy tale pins from New Jersey. So it, like kind of put us at a hard spot because. Yeah, you had to negotiate. You'd be like, I'll give you my entire set for your entire set, which is also better than my set, but yet I need that set to get something better than that set so I can. <laughs> which is basically a scam. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is. We learned from the best from Carteret, like high school, the high school Carteret team, and we saw multiple scams happen. Well, you know, but you buddied up and they taught you the ropes, I yes? Yeah. They're very, I don't, little girl. I did too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So next year you'll know what you're doing. You'll yes. be experienced in pin trading, so. Right. And you'll be teaching other people. Yep. Well, I have to add here, it's not only the kids. The parents too are pin trading. <laughs> That's what they did, all of Odyssey, by the way. Oh my goodness. We almost forgot it was an actual competition. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's get to the certificates. These are Certificate of Achievement in recognition of your contribution to the 2021-2022 Ordo Public School Odyssey of the Mind team. Congratulations from the Ordo Board of Education. So first we have Arhan. Lucas. Simon. Simon's not here tonight. Oh, but Simon's not here. Okay. We love that you said his name. Sanvi. Yes, Sanvi. <laughs> Bibi. All right, let's take a picture over there with Ms. Sham. Want me to use your camera again? Uh, you're going to end up in there, you know that. I'm going to take the camera. Wait, there's other cameras coming. <laughs> the real cameras. These are the ones that matter. It would be funny if, like, one in your pocket, but one yeah. in your pocket. Yeah. Oh, hold up, hold up here. Come on. Right up. side up. And make sure it's right side up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Good, good. Lucas, <laughs> see, go do a mod for one picture of Mama's face. Yes, you do. Well, we need a little balance of pink over here. Yes. Put the red and pink. Oh, I love it. That's perfect. Just perfect. Stay there. So we thank you all for coming. We appreciate it when we have our students come present to us. So we, you don't have to stay for the rest of our meeting because we know it'll bore you to tears. Do you want to bring stuff down to my room? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. We got to clean out that closet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the fun part. Always. Save the costumes. Save the costumes. Yeah. Oh, what are we doing here? You leave them in my room, and we'll sort through it tomorrow. So, if I'm going to take Yeah, just take it away. You're good. If I'm, if I'm yeah, eating this, should I take it home? Bring it all downstairs for now. Take this Got it? Do you need help? And where is it? Yep. Creative ways to carry things. Okay, wait. Good job. Excellent. <laughs> Serbia, I think you should wear it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> 
I love it. I, just, I see Sandra's pain. Don't <laughs> bow. Your head will fall off. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay, so moving on. Um, don't forget, we have the July 4th parade coming up. Is anyone going to be around? Hopefully, Ordell Ave will be open by then. Greg, are we going to get the truck? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So we'll talk about it next meeting, whoever's around. What date is it on? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. No, so is it really July. on July 4th? Yeah. I couldn't remember. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll be back. Okay. Uh, let's go to superintendent's report. I am incredibly excited that our students naturally brought the design process into um, their speaking today because both Edison Pitch and Odyssey have those components in there. At our next meeting, I will provide an update of our three district goals, which will include how our kindergarten students have been using the design process with coding and our Title IV funds, we bought some Kibo resources this year, and we have some great videos of the work that they've been doing. I'll also share some of the plans that we have in place for 2022-2023, and Ms. Shom's gonna keep them under wraps for now oh, yeah. about we're going to, how we're going to expand some of our um, robotics programs. Uh, speaking of the summer on tonight's agenda, you'll be asked to approve both our explorations and extended school year staff. I've also been in contact with the Oriental Rec Department regarding the summer program, which will return to OPS this year. This building's going to be very busy this summer between all of those programs and the renovation of the auditorium happening at the same time. But before we can even get to the summer, there's still a lot happening at OPS. Hopefully you had a chance to walk by the Spring Fling on Friday. It was a hopping event and it was wonderful. I am incredibly grateful for the members of our community that stepped up to create such a great night for our students. And word on the street is we may have a new center lot tradition on our hands. Uh, it turned out to be a really great location for the event, um, a little less hot than the NPR and the building actually did diffuse all sound. It was pretty amazing. Um, tomorrow we will have our last concert of the year. It will, it will include choral band and handbell performances and begins at 6.30. Uh, you may actually see the handbells being performed outside because we like to try something new all the time. Uh, next Tuesday, June 14th, we'll have our sixth grade awards and spirit night at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. And of course, commencement will be on the front lawn on Wednesday, June 22nd. Tomorrow, my office will send out your in official invite to commencement. And that concludes my report. Okay, um, our business administrator is at his convention in Atlantic City, I believe. I spoke to him earlier. He's enjoying his time. Um, let's move to minutes review of May 25th. Any questions or comments, please email Mr. Marmora. Approval of May 11th. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the meeting minutes of May 11th. Second. Second by Mrs. Norian. Any questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Nigam? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Moving to committee reports, Mr. Darian, would you take administrative items? Uh, yes, we have uh, administrative item A1, HIB report for April 2022. I'll second it. Any questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta? Mrs. Nigam? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Buildings and grounds, Mr. Darian? Yes. Uh, no update since our last meeting. I have two items tonight, B1, B2, for school use, facility use. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Walsh. Any questions? I have a question. Mr. Walsh? I noticed that the rec um, is not only getting the gym, but the multi-purpose room, the room 137, 138, 150, that's, has that been done previous? I don't think we've given out room, classrooms. Um, in 2019, they started to spread to other places because um, at that time, the director that took over of the rec program wanted to expand the program and give it more structure. Um, back in the day when I first got here, it was that drop-in and you just went to the gym and you were just outside. There's actually now an arts and crafts class 
they try to separate the kids. It's a little more organized and a little more controlled, which is why they use the additional space. Yeah, we space. used to use the basement of the town hall mm -hmm. and the gym. Yeah. That was the two places. But We're going to see how it goes. We're going to see how it goes this year. And they, they do also continue to use DPAC and um, the swim club. Um, they'll bus every Friday away from here to go to the swim club. Okay. Any other questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Nigam. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mrs. Norian. Yes. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Darian. Yes. Mrs. Nichols. Yes. Curriculum, Mrs. Norian. Uh, yes. You find the um, summary of our, our last meeting uh, in your um, packet. And with that, I'd like to move that we approve the curriculum for visual arts and media arts and world language. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Walsh. Any questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Nigam. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mrs. Norian. Yes. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Darian. Yes. Mrs. Nichols. Yes. Finance. Uh, will you take that, Mr. Darian? Sure. Uh, tonight uh, we have 25 items under finance D1 through D25. I just have a comment. You want to make the motion first? I'll yes, second. sorry. Sorry, let me make a motion. Introduce items D1 through 25. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Walsh. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on the cameras. Um, you know, I've been here roughly 10 years. We're now on our third iteration of cameras. We originally had old school analog. We went to high def, I don't know, 720p, something like that. Uh, cameras digital uh, so we can have uh, backup um, on a server and now we've gone to the third version which is even better yet um, you know it's important that we enhance our security and uh, currently we're at 38 cameras throughout the building and we're going to 58 so um, they're inside outside everywhere so I th I'm glad to see that um, you know, we're on the leading edge of, of what we can do. Um, oh, um, yes, we I have, I have, are you finished? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to mention that, um, you know, the, the, the reason we're getting additional cameras is because we had a, um, a county uh, risk assessor come through the building and make recommendations. When was that? That was a while ago, right? I wasn't there. When, when um, it was here? approximately two months ago. Um, it was in conjunction with the Oriental Police Department. The three of us walked oh. through together with our current views of our cameras to identify any blind spots or any place that we thought could use enhancement. Mrs. Walker? Um, I just had a couple of comments. Uh, 1D9, um, the donation from the Odyssey parents for $2,600. Uh, very generous on their part, too donate that back to the school. And also the donation that um, Mrs. Sean, Ms. Sean just mentioned, the $7.99 from the Edison Innovation Foundation. Kids want that, right? Yes, yes, yes. And then there's one last one, D14. Um, looking that over, approval of real-time information technology. Um, could you explain what that is, especially because it's seventeen thousand dollars? It's much higher this year because I think we got a new module, right? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it, it is a little bit higher, but I'm not sure if it's also it because up, yeah, from yeah. my we last September we approved something and then we added a module mid-year, which was an electronic signature module. Um, real time is everything. It is our student management system, so it clean keeps all of our student data. It is our IEP software. It is where our teachers do lesson planner. It is pretty much the brains of every single thing that we do at Ordell Public. So the, the, whatever you wanna do, for instance, your lesson plans or doing an IEP, mm -hmm. you log into mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. it, it's also what keeps all our student um, data information. So if I wanted to, see a student's information. I would log in, I would see a photograph of that student and all of their information, their report cards, their contact information, everything. Okay. So, and that's at a cost of 17,000. Yeah. Um, sorry, just a follow-up questions. And the e-signature, 
module that you mentioned, is that, you know, parents go in and sign some things in there. Is that what that's used for? Or? It's usually used in special education okay. for meetings and remote meetings, and okay. that's why Got last it. year it needed to be added. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I have. I have a question. Mr. Walsh? Can, can you explain D5 for me, please? Let's see. This is a new therapy center we're using for special it's new ed. this year. Is it new? I'm assuming because it's on our... Because it's school year 2021-2022, it's clearly for this year, so I'm, I'm guessing that we have a, a student in our special services program that needs services, and this is the therapy center that we are using for them. So mostly it's for one student? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta. Mrs. Nigam. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mrs. Norian. Yes. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Darian. Yes. Mrs. Nichols. Yes. Uh, delegate report, Mr. Walsh. I have nothing to report. All right. Personnel, Mrs. Walker. Oh, sorry. Um, I'd like to present F. One. I'll second. Any questions? Call the question. Yes. Mrs. Nigam. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mrs. Norian. Yes. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Darian. Yes. Mrs. Nichols. Yes. Policy, Mrs. Nigam. Nothing to report. Public relations and COVID task force, Mr. Griffin. Uh, no new update. We do have to set a task force meeting though. Yes. We talked about that, so. Yeah. Okay, so let's maybe set that date. Get that set this week. Sounds good. Um, at this time, we'll open to the public. Miss mm. Shom can't talk, she talked enough already. <laughs> Anyone else want to speak? <laughs> Any old or new business? Mrs. Walker? Um, this is just an aside um, uh, related to curriculum. We had, I, I was really impressed with Mrs. Brancato's presentation. Um, I guess it was last week. Um, it was really detailed, and uh, what an awesome job she has to um, update that whole curriculum uh, of all different areas and subjects, and um, I really enjoyed it, and uh, good luck. You still have your hands full, but you're coming along, girl, so thank you. Mr. Griffin? So I read the update in uh, the report about um, the STEM coach. Is there any other new update at this point? They're still in the process of interviewing. Uh, it has, sometimes when you put that panel together, it takes all a little longer, but I think it's a worthwhile effort. Great, thanks. Any other older new business? We mentioned that we are looking at accomplishing the uh, superintendent. Oh, uh, we're going to closed session. We can't talk about them publicly. Oh, I know, but that we will have to, as a board, complete. Yeah, we're going to go into closed session for that. Okay. Any other older new business? I move we go to closed. All right. Any um, council made a motion? Second by Mr. Walsh. All in favor for closed session? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay, we will not be taking any action after this, and we're going to talk personnel in the closed session.